Good evening and welcome back to Troy's Tasting Room. This week we are taking a look at Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon. So we're in the new world in California with some of its most classic examples, some still retaining that classic style, really traditional winemaking methods, while others represent something a little bit more modern, moving with the times. We'll start with Dunn Vineyards, Napa Valley Cabernet 2013. Then we'll head to Schaefer, their 1.5, 2018. And then last will be a duo of wines, both Chapelet and Philip Togny Vineyard. All four of these wines are full-bodied red wines in their youth, meaning that they will benefit from decanting. In other words, pouring into another vessel for a little bit of oxygen exposure. I'll start by pouring the wine here into this carafe, then back into the bottle for a little extra exposure before enjoying from the glass. So let's get things started with Dunn Vineyard's Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon 2013. Really a classic producer, some may say traditional and old school. Randy Dunn, the founder here, was the original enologist at Chemis, which of course is one of the most famous brands today. Dunn Vineyard sits atop Howell Mountain, so we're in the far northern end of the Napa Valley, really a gorgeous estate just north of the town of Angwin. Now, the Napa Valley blend here is produced partly from that estate, about 35%, then finishing with fruit from the valley floor, specifically around Coombsville. So this is a dark and rich, brooding and leathery style of Cabernet. Pushing 10 years here, it's still just a baby stylistically. It's really a wine that could go another 10, 15, maybe 20 years in the bottle, especially from such a hot vintage like 2013. Their main wine, the Howl Mountain Estate, will push, well, extensive years of bottle age. To quote Randy Dunn himself in an event recently when somebody brought up one of the 1979s, the first vintage, he said, put that back, let's drink the Napa Valley instead. So really, we have a dense and rich style. We have a lot of complexity and tertiary characteristics such as mushroom and forest floor and potting soil. It's really one of those bottles of wine that we could spend all night talking about and the first sip will be entirely different from the last. Now we can't go without mentioning the Dunn family's incredible approach to sustainability, contributions to local agricultural and charity organizations, and their very hands-off approach to vineyard management, really letting the fruit speak for itself without intervening too much chemically. Now let's go ahead and begin our next selection tonight. That's going to be Schaefer's 1.5 2018. Now, Schaefer Vineyards, located up in Stag's Leap, so we're a little bit more central to Napa Valley, is truly one of the signature producers. This, the 1.5, represents one and a half generations of family winemaking, father and son duo John and Doug Schaefer, and first vintage 1978. So we're still working with a wine that has an extensive history in the valley, really signature in terms of style. Now, compared to the Dunn in particular, this is a little bit more black. It's not showing that garnet bricking that 10 years of bottle age brought into the 2013. Instead, we've got something ripe and full. It's got a lot of fruit character, that cassis and plum, but it also shows a lot of oak. French oak, of course, so baking spices, cardamom, nutmeg. It's almost decadent on the nose, but on the palate, a little bit more fully structured. It's still got a lot of that leather character, that almost cedar cigar box that's really classic to Cabernet Sauvignon. It's got intensity and power. It's a wine that could easily age 10 to 20 years depending on individual vintage quality. And in this example with the 2018, it's absolutely huge, almost opulent in the glass. Really what a lot of people are looking for in California Cabernet. It's definitely more modern in style, but again, we have a sort Sort of legacy here of family winemaking who's been sort of cultivating this style for well one and a half generations next up is chapelet's signature cabernet sauvignon founded by don chapelet in 1967 this winery represents really some of the most legendary wines ever produced in the napa valley their 1969 made by winemaker philip togny who we'll be talking about quite soon is still widely regarded by many sommeliers as the best napa valley cabernet sauvignon Sauvignon ever bottled. The winery sits atop Pritchard Hill, so we're in northern Napa to a certain extent, but really focused on elevation. 
and, and dry, rocky soils. In the glass, this has that dark, rich color we saw in the Schaefer. Obviously, this is quite young, and these are wines well known for their aging capability, but we're certainly on the more modern side of things. We don't see any garnet bricking caused by either age or extensive oxidation. Instead, it's black licorice melted down into the glass. And on the nose, it shows all of that sort of finesse right alongside the power of the wine. It's expressively fruit driven with black currant, plum, and cassis, but it carries that really smooth, silky French oak characteristic on the nose, baking spices, cinnamon, and cardamom. Everything we'd look for in big, bold, structured Napa Cab, something that'd benefit from laying down 25 years, depending on vintage capability. Really an incredible expression here. And of course, family owned, incredible stewards of the land here, really a winery I'm always thrilled to share. One I can't recommend enough to visit its state itself is absolutely gorgeous and this is really what i would consider benchmark for napa valley cabernet this is the baseline i really would put all other wines against it may not be the most expensive or even the most famous but i really could not imagine putting my nose in this glass and not thinking of anything other than the napa valley and after enjoying this selection, I think the only suitable follow-up would be to take a look a little further back at Chapelet's history and see what its original winemaker, Philip Togni, is doing these days. We'll finish today with Philip Togni Vineyard 2016. Now, Philip Togni, I mentioned, was the winemaker at Chapelet, making their legendary 69. He bought this estate up in Spring Mountain in 1975, and now here on that side of Napa Valley, he's making some of the best Cabernet today. So his daughter Lisa Togni taking over as winemaker in recent years, so two generations of family here. And this expression already showing in the glass that kind of garnet brick color that we saw with the Dunn, so already showing some of the qualities of bottle age and really an expression that could definitely go much, much longer. Now both generations here draw a lot of inspiration from Bordeaux. The Togni website lists this as a Margot inspired blend, heavily driven in Cabernet. Cabernet Sauvignon, but finishing with Merlot, Cab Franc, and Petit Verdot. So Margot, known for making softer styles of wine, and this definitely falls in that line. It's dark and it's rich, but it's got a lot of elegance. There's earth, there's finesse, there's florals, purple flowers. There's a touch of that fresh turned earth on the nose. And that's not just that touch of bottle age, it really seems to be coming from the varietal character, the way that the vineyard was worked, the way that the winemaking was approached. It's rich and it's bold, it's everything I look for in Napa Cab, but there's something more here that is a little tough to describe. Now, I don't mean to gush over a wine, I like to present things objectively and straightforward, but but this is really what I consider to be true Napa Valley Cabernet, something that's expressive of a vineyard site and a winemaking style. It may not be my favorite, it may not be yours, but it's definitely elevated. It's really performing well above its price point in relativity. We're within comparable price points of the other wines we've tasted today, but this one shows a little bit of a unique texture, a bit of finesse and polish that the others just can't match. It may not be as big and bold or as oaked as some of the other wines, which may be what a guest is looking for in a restaurant or if I'm looking in the store to find something specific. But as far as Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon, Philip Togni is still making some of the best wines in Napa Valley. Valley. Now, thank you so much for joining me today in Troy's Tasting Room. It's always a pleasure to have you. I can't wait to welcome you back next week as we try another flight of wines. Make sure you like and subscribe. That way you never miss out on Troy's Tasting Room.